Hey everyone, it's Norm from Tested here at Monster Palooza 2022. And this is Simon Lee, who we've met before, concept sculptor for yes. films and, and a creature designer. Tell me about some of the, the recent works that you've been working on. Well, uh, you know, throughout the pandemic, I mean, before the pandemic, um, I was working on quite a few projects. You know, I did um, the last voyage of uh, Demeter. So mm. it's like a, you know, so that one uh, is probably gonna come out at some point, you know, hopefully. And then uh, I also worked on uh, Lord of Rings for Amazon. Oh, very you cool. Know, so those were some cool projects before the pandemic. And during the pandemic, I ended up teaching a lot. Oh, yeah. yes, yes. You do a lot of online classes yes. and, and teaching people concept sculpting, the idea of how to just like sketching, but in form in 3D yes. for so feature design. Yes, exactly. So it's more of a three-dimensional way of you know sketching, sketching out your conceptual ideas yeah. and your design, you know, uh, uh, those kind of things. And at Monster Palooza, you always bring a really beautiful showpiece. Thank you. And this is the one from this year. Tell me about the story, because there's got to be a story behind <laughs> this. So this one, this one was actually inspired by a HP Lovecraft story. It's called The Shun House. So in the story, at the end of the story, the protagonist was, you know, digging up in his basement and he ended up unearthing this giant elbow of a creature. And that was the end of the story. So, you know, I basically want to go ahead and try to figure out what's actually buried beneath the earth. So this is pretty much the creature minus the dirt and all that stuff. Wow, yeah. what a concept. So it, it does express that idea of concept sculpting because you are taking just the bit of an idea, right? The elbow of an idea, but the, the parameters that had to be earthy. And like, yes. this reads as earthy. Yeah, so that, I mean, that, that's pretty much uh, the, the things that I do on films. You know, a lot of times there's a few lines of, you know, description of the, uh, the, the scene and I will have to develop the visual world for that. Yeah. So, and this is a, you know, a demonstration for my students, how things like that can be done. Uh, because I mean, the story itself is wi uh, widely available, uh, but how do we take it one step further? Yeah. You know, and try to really dive into the world kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Can you walk me through the actual physical sculpting of this piece? So this was all hand sculpted. You know, originally I actually sculpted a much bigger hand, Wow. Uh, but it ended up you know, being too big for my display case. So I started over with a smaller version, but, you know, ended up fitting the whole thing inside of a box. So it's almost like, um, you know, uh, drawing on a canvas on a piece of paper, you have to fit your idea within the boundary of that. And in the physical world of sculpture, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to contain the idea within this display box. And some of that is the pose as well, this contorted pose of this, Rat creature. It, yeah, it is about the uh, the performance, you know. So so we have a character. What is this character doing on, in front of the camera? Mm. What is the screen presence? So you know, you can call it posing, you can call it performance, but it's really about you know uh, develop, uh, delivering a body language, you know, whereas, whether it's a painful expression or some kind of contortion, whatever that may be, we want to inspire the audience's imagination mm. and bring them into this world. Hmm. How do you think about the lens or the, you know, the viewer, like, and, and whether this is a very tall piece or, you know, when a creature is shown on the film, that's going to be widescreen, there's going to be a reveal, like, how, how does that factor into your, I mean, your the, performance design? Well, yeah, because, because of what I do, I always try to use a, a filmmaker's perspective when it comes to design. I always try to look at my design from behind the, the camera lens kind of thing. So I'm always looking for where is the camera pointing, where is the audience going to look, you know, what, what will capture their attention. Yeah. So by working like that, I try to capture the focal point, and then that's how I would, you know, progressively, you know, develop this, uh, this visual idea. So hopefully, you know, when, when the cameraman pan the camera up and down, right. there's many interesting angles that it can use. So there's very much a filmmaker's approach to design. Yeah. And, and a reveal as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, and even the way you're lighting it, like the yeah. fact that that's, it seems like that's with a, a practical <laughs> light in the piece. I mean, uh, this type of lighting condition is not ideal, but you know, if, if it's in a actual film format, then the reveal will be much more dramatic, right? Mm. Because of the lighting setup. Yeah. How do you decide how far to go in terms of the detail? Uh, usually, depending on how much time I have for a concept piece, 
uh, you know, I'll try to budget the time frame. Uh, instead of taking it all the way to finish to a production level finish, if I'm just delivering a concept, I want the concept to be clear and effective to get the message across, mm. which means I don't need extreme close-ups for that. Right? Right. That is for the actual production process of the filmmaking. So, um, you know, that's how we approach things with the conceptual side. That's also how I approach my sculptural work as well. Do you get carried away sometimes in terms of like wanting to bring out um, parts of the detail? Sometimes, but you know, I've done this long enough to know <laughs> where and when to when and where to stop. Kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, it's such a striking piece. Like the more I look at it, the more I'm I'm I'm, I'm learning, which I think is part of the the intention. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I mean, I just want you know, I want everything to be kind of flowing, and even when the way the fingers are yes, pointing, yes, that's kind of guiding the audience's attention and say, okay, now that you've done the visual tour. This fingertip is pointing you, you should go back up. That will complete the circle. Kind of thing. Wow. A piece like this, what's the scope of time that you're allowing yourself to work on? How much time do you think this took me? <laughs> a, a month? Uh, this was actually two and a half days. <laughs> two and a half days, two amazing. And half days. Yeah. Speed well, and, and knowing your craft. Well, it's, yeah, because this is what I do and this yeah. is what you know people pay me for. Um, so it's not about the speed, it's about uh, how effective I am in terms of delivering the idea right. or to show them a visual concept because when the concept is working, then we can spend more time mm -hmm. or let's develop this further. Right. Then they will be uh, beneficial and more efficient for everybody involved. Yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes they may want multiple, multiple approaches mm -hmm. and concepts. Yes, and, yes. And iteration I mean, is a measured type of progression. You know, it's not just endlessly detailing for the sake of detailing because with concepts, with developing visual world, that doesn't work. We need to make sure that we're moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Do you find that there's a, a lot of interest in young sculptors, young artists wanting to work in concept sculpting? Uh, there's a lot of artists interested in uh, concept design, but with concept sculpting, it is still uh, kind of, you know, uh, limited because most sculptors uh, work in production, work in the production part of the uh, uh, the filmmaking process. There are a lot more modelers and character artists, but it just so happened the way I use sculpture has always been more illustrative mm -hmm. and just you know sketching in clay kind of thing. Yeah. So whether it's digital medium or the uh, traditional medium, I always work like this. Yeah. And, and by design, does that mean that when you're done with this, you have to set it aside and you have to just move on to the next thing? I can either do that or I can keep going. It's almost like having a conversation with someone you know, if we're having an interesting conversation, we can just keep going. Yeah. But if, you know, if we're not, we're not connecting, it's like, okay, you know, the interview is over kind of thing. Uh, so with concept design, it's the same thing. If I, when I present this to a client, if they're responding well, if they want to find out more, then I can develop more, I can give them more. Mm -hmm. uh, because it is, you know, taking the, the, the client's uh, position in mind, and also delivering the things that are more relevant to their needs. I'm sure that's also what helps you be a good teacher as yes, well. Yes, just yeah. in terms of communication. Everybody's different. It's not just about reading the book to the entire class. Each artist, each student are coming in here with a different angle, different perspective. Understanding where they're coming from will make me a more efficient teacher as well. Well, thank you so much, Simon, for well, your time. You, and it's great to see you at Monster Palooza again as well as your latest piece. Great to piece. see you as always. Yeah. Thank you.